Greetings and salutations, I am the Raven, this is another mini session for the Smalls. This time joining me is Lady Mate. How the hell? And Star Princess HLC. Star? Oh no. <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, interruption. Uh. <laughs> I think not going to be happening too much. Three seconds later, five interruptions later. Should be fine now, but yeah, my mom came in with the package and she was like, why is your door closed? Privacy? Yeah. Anyway, anyway. Yep. Nothing too public. It's, <coughs> just, it's been a few days since the, uh, since the party. The snow started to fall, the cold breeze has started to come in. Magpie is still freaking out. Most of the news around the guild is it's still on the dragon. It it comes, it goes. He seems to be teleported about the place. No one knows how. The thing's truly alien. But for you two, you two have your own, your own concerns. Ricky, that's an understatement, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> for poor Magpie, she's just... Do I have a... Do, do he really... Oh, God. Like, she's kind of, like, her brain is, like, she's trying to sort what just happened out a few days, from a few days ago. What well, doesn't help is that the mail has come in, and in it has been a small parcel marked with a pink strawberry for the uh, magpie. She opens it. It is a handmade mug, ceramic, painted well, uh. in pretty much your colours. Oh, okay, it's not exactly the most well done on mugs, but it's, it's well done. But there's a doubt that Betty, Betty says, thinking, you, thinking of you and Possibly for those times where you just need a drink at night. Signed, Luke. Magpie. Magpie is just, like, blushing, like... Because in Pixie Ward, handmade gifts are, like, a very big sign of how much you care about someone. So Magpie's like, oh my god. What, he just researched Pixie Ward on me or something? Oh god. She's bright red. And flustered. So, does anyone notice this? Ah, oh, there's a few going around, mostly my little business. Some do notice you looking red, but, well, they know. They've seen you around town, around tiny before. They're just deciding you're crushing on someone else now. It's not just a big deal for them. Chris, she's not that girl! <laughs> <laughs> Great! That's what she gets for being a teenager in love. <laughs> she goes to find one of the more, I guess, experienced smalls with this kind of thing. So either Shifros or Yuki. Uh. You're gonna find Yuki a lot easier. The others seem to be busy with other little little jobs along the way. Yeah. Uh, it, Yuki, um, help. Uh, yep, yep. Yeah. 
she's currently like passed out in her room in her bed <laughs> she's just that tired of trying to sleep constant nightmares mom me to get her a dream catcher or something Mm. Meh. I'll let her, uh, sleep. Oh boy. Magpie leaves the room and she's just like, What do I do? What do I do? And keep in mind, she stopped to put the mug in her room because she didn't want it getting broken or anything. Also, dang it, Lantern, don't boop during mini-sessions. <laughs> so, Magpie is just kind of like sitting against the wall near Yuki's room, just flustered, trying to figure out, like, oh my god, did he really just have handmade or handmade himself something for her. And eventually Yuki does wake up, but it takes her a bit because she's been going through a lot. <laughs> and then it also just kind of dawned her like, Ah, uh, shit, Magpie knows stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have to address that, aren't I? <laughs> well, she'll find Magpie still sitting behind her room, like, in her own head, with her own problems. Mm. So... Oh, first off, Yuki gets stressed, because she sleeps in the nude. <laughs> She's a fox. I would have. I. Intentionally, <laughs> she, she could walk around naked. She's a fox, <laughs> like Okasan can, because he's a burb. Not quite, but we'll get to that eventually. Maybe. <laughs> Okasan is something. Yeah. Does she just? Stumbles out of bed, gets changed, like, goes possibly to go look for food, and just, it's like, oh, hello, Magpie, I was just about to look for you. <laughs> I was gonna ask you for help about something, but what's up, Yuki? I'll let you go first. Hey, uh, now you. <laughs> Now, somebody Magpie tells me of... it's related to a few things. <sighs> Why don't you tell me your situation? Because I need to show you something for mine. And it's in my room right now. So walk and talk with me. Okay. So, you know, she's going to let Yuki do her, tell her, address her thing first. Obviously, you. Well, you saw something when I was in the infirmary, so... Yeah, we have to I... talk about that. Well, if you feel you're ready to do so, I ain't gonna push you. I saw what I saw, and it didn't look fun. It Honestly, if I ever see any of those other foxes, I feel bad for those foxes. Yeah... Long story short, obviously you could tell part of that, but that entire group, they're known as the Shiverthorns. Love Lenine. Mm -hmm. They're a group of vulpins who tend to cause a lot of mischief. Seems like that caused a murder. Yeah. And that was your papa. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's not all, obviously, they did to me. 
I get the inkling that you weren't always a fox. That's the assumption. But I think they yeah. did something to my memory as well, because that's the first time I've remembered that in a long time. You just see Magpie stop for a second and get really mad. Fucking what did they do to you? Because remember, Magpie had her memory messed with too with the Lord of the Harvest. So... Yuki, mm -hmm. somebody who doesn't remember, somebody named Malcolm who should be important to her. I'm going to turn all of those damn foxes into a rug. Like, she's so angry, she's shaking. Yeah. Hopefully, well, that was... You saw the notes during the time when we were getting dresses. That was from them. Yeah, I kind of put that together in my own head in that your old name was Viola, but something tells me you don't want to be called that for a while. Viola. And at this point, because I'm trying to avoid them, I'm keeping to Yuki. Teal, they found out they were able to get into my satchel, meaning they may have an inkling you're here. Yeah, that's a concern. I wouldn't be At surprised if they're what... looking for me back, because I used to run with them. Well, I figured you didn't have a choice back then if you did run with them. Sounds like you, unlike them, know the difference between right and wrong. I saw that one that went after your dad. Ugh. Psychotic little thing. Yeah, that one's known as Dixieland, but we named her, Di but her nickname is Dixie Doo for short. I call her a dick. You know, in hindsight, that's a shorter name. They should have gone with that, but eh. <laughs> <sighs> well, I got your back, Yuki. They ain't getting near you anymore. Appreciate that. I think Cyrano's going to be looking out as well. I, I told him a little bit about it. Yeah, I'm guessing he's a little more involved than I am, but... I think we can trust Cyrano. I mean, the poor guy probably knows what it's like to run with the wrong crowd without any choice. I mean, he's stuck with Percy as his cousin. Mm hmm Seems like we both can relate to it in different ways. You with the memory, me with the memory, and him with the crowd. Yeah. My problem's stupider. Oh. They get to her room at this point, and she shows her the note and the mug. I think Ludwig did some homework on Pixie Ward. I mean, that's... That's really sweet that he's doing all that for you. It's handmade. In Pixie Ward, you give somebody something handmade... That means you really care about them. I mean, that's what's supposed to happen in relationships. I know that, but <laughs> I, I, okay. The reason I'm so flipping out is Ludwig is still a noble. And mm -hmm. as I've said, nobles ain't exactly well liked in Pix Award. We don't trust nobles by instinct. Like, you notice when Cervantes was going, Hey, you know, let's get the whole guild in on the harvest. I flipped the shit. Uh -huh. It's because I figured Cervantes was going to be an idiot. I mean, he's... He's got a soft touch, but... Yeah, not, not much in the head sometimes. Okay, I wasn't wrong. Though, the book Snark gave me, aside from the manual, um, told me that... Well, <laughs> he actually did know a lot about the harvest, more than most. Like, it was a full history of it. Did you know Lady Kiki faced off against it once? 
Honestly, given what we know of her, I'm not that surprised. That's probably why she sent that thank you. It was personal. Hmm. And, of course, we've had nobles come to us because of broken deals, and, well, guess why the deals were broken? As usual. <laughs> nobles did it. So, now take a drow noble who's rather intimidating, despite the fact I'm actually two inches taller than him. Mm. I mean, you say and, that, my current new boyfriend is, like, two feet taller than me, so... <laughs> well, in case you forgot, I'm technically the tallest small in the group. Yeah. I mean, that used to be me, but obviously that's changed. <laughs> well, at least... But at least Shifros ain't the shortest. No. You know, he handling. funded the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, though, is Midnight's a terrifying noble. He can deal with Faye as well as anyone in Pixie Ward. Faye Warders would be jealous of him talking to a Lord of the Forest and it going as well as it did. I was there for that one. Uh -huh. Or even, like, basically Baba Yaga's his grandma. Think about that. If you are so good with the Fae that Baba Yaga is basically your grandmother, you got a silver tongue at this point. And I assumed that a lot of it was that Granny taught him well. Granny and Baba Yaga, they mentioned it at the party. So that means if you two married, you're going to be related to Baba Yaga, sort of. I hit your screaming and I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't the problem. As dangerous as Baba Yaga is, if you are in a good graces, you're in a good spot. Her teeth, on the other hand, I still want to put in a freaking cage. <laughs> Real little things. As long as it doesn't go back in Okasan's mouth, I think we're fine. I don't in anyone's mouth but Baba Yaga's. That's where they belong. Is that what's going on? Now, here's the last. Is that the moment here? Here you go. Smalls. Huh? What? I guess that's us. You look down and you see a gnome. Big beard, tall pointy hat. Seems a lot familiar. And they steal your underpants at one point. <laughs> <laughs> there's another one. Oh, uh, don't. There's another one there who says stuff about Snippy Lock. Yep, I definitely stole your underpants at one point. He's holding up an env envelope for you to take. Yoink. Snippy Lock. You're the mail reader. Alright, let's see what this one says. I may not see you, some. I don't think he likes you. <laughs> the numbers went off. All right, let's see here. Hopefully, it's not a dick pic. <laughs> you open it up, and oh no, it's a dick pic. The... There's a picture of of uh, Richard Dickerson in there that just falls out. However, the real message behind it is uh, <laughs> to whom we make. I'm about it. To hold who remain concerned, we put in a request from the Temple of Saloon for help with romantic issues to a local in need of help with their love life. Please help. Come uh, soon. Okay, they are. Uh, they need us for dating advice. It's an interesting request, considering I'm pretty sure most of the most of the group doesn't date. Like I don't think I've ever seen Shifros with the dates. Okosan definitely not, and I 
I don't think Lo is that kind of thing. Person? Yeah. Reminds me, I still need to get them a pet. Something feline, because they really like the displacer based. Mm hmm. I. Well, Chef Ross, maybe, because he's good with the social stuff, but yeah, let's go. So, I'm not exact. I'm flipping out over a dang coffee mug! The letter in Coffee! The letter says for you to go to the local market that's been held. Held in the, uh, in the, uh, village next over. Mm -hmm. Let's go! Yep. Also, as a note for people, that since the nightmare, Yuki has stopped going on all fours and pretty much has gone bipedal for the bulk of everything. Now, since the next town, the next village over is bit over, and by the time you got there, the the market will be over, you head down to the teleportation rooms. Anyone got a dash on hand? Uh, I got some dice here, yeah. Which one? D20. Straight up gives the roll. Okay. 15. You find Scotty. You tell him where you want to go. He directs you to another place. You head that way to his sister, Dottie. Dottie? I had an aunt dot once. And you go in a circle, Dottie pulls the lever, you teleport away. For some reason, you found yourself teleported into a, a dank cave. Well, apparently an oak is on that breaks it. Is this where we're supposed to be? Unless we're romancing bats, I don't know. A moment later, you're teleported back. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. He didn't want, he didn't want to send you, send you to me, Dotty. He said he meant to send you to Hottie. Next door. We do that. You head into the next room, you're greeted by Hottie. You have to use a brick and roll onto the teleport, teleporting circle. Away you go. You teleport right into the middle of the market. Well, that only took one mistake this time. You greeted the sounds of animals, of people, of children playing, of food being cooked. There's a uh, there's a mobile kitchen. Be wheeled around with chicken being cooked to the road tree on it. Uh oh. Uh, Yuki? Remember, we got a job. Oh. Can. <laughs> Wait, have you eaten yet? No. All right, go eat the chicken. I'll fight <laughs> <pay> for <laughs> it. Hey, hey, hey! Night fight. It does a silver piece of leg. It's five silver for the entire chicken. Magpie puts money down, pays for it. Hi, hey, She needed breakfast. Makes that money first. Sorry about that. Need mashed potatoes and gravy with it, but it's fine. <laughs> Burp. You check back with a letter that tells you to check out a certain stall. They're selling handweed carpets. There's a number of old carpets there. Behind them is a little girl. Well, you think they're a little girl anyway. With, with uh, blonde oh. hair and pigtails. Hello. Hi, uh, we were told to come here. Somebody needed a little help. Oh, yeah. Grab your ass. That's the temple to send someone to help out with the dating. 
All right. That's why we're here to help with the dating problem. I'm Magpie. This is Yuki. Hi. You're a fox. Yes, I am. She also has a boyfriend, so she knows what she's doing. Oh, that's good. It's just that girl has gone back to the cave. So, uh... Cut. She just pulls out a map for you. You can go to talk to Granny, please. She's rather depressed about the situation. Cave. Aren't we just in a cave? One cave. Uh... Sweetie! Why does your grandma live in a cave? Don't have to pay rent. You know, I can't argue that. Well, I guess we're going to a cave, Yuki. <laughs> Again. Eh, typical Tuesday. <laughs> but it's Thursday. Typical Tuesday. You follow the map, it takes about half an hour to go through the outlining forest up to the... to go towards the mountain range where the cave is located. It's a bit of a climb to get up there. Even though it's just a path you walk. You find the cave. It's big, it's open, it's dark inside. But it's a welcome m m uh, mat outside. Says, wipe your paws. Oh, yeah. Like Pie wipes her boots. Icky wipes all four of her paws, even though she's just walking on two feet. Eh, better safe than sorry. True, they're probably covered in chicken grease. What a poultry situation. <laughs> I, I, the TM... With this look of why. <laughs> Just... Hello? Uh, we're here to help with the dating situation? You we're hear... love gurus! You hear... I wouldn't... You hear scuffling of sorts. Where it looks like... It sounded like... Things were covering the entire walls, they're scuttling away to the back in the cave. Do I want to know what's scuttling? Hello? We were sent here by the Church of Love or whatever it's called. Uh, my name's Magpie. This is Yuki. Hello. Uh, you're your granddaughter told us how to get here. It's just then you notice at the foot of the mouth a severed hand pops out walking around his fingers and then it snaps some kind of game of serrates which is tapping tapping away basically saying come in. I, I, I guess we'll follow the severed hand. And then it's because it's back into the cave. You okay? What did we get ourselves into this time? And we can't blame Okasan for this one. No, we can't. All right. Follow the hand. This is why I'm always armed. Not that one. That one's been disarmed. Well, you gotta hand it to him. That is a good trick. Hmm. Hello? They're following the hand. Magpie is just very confused. For a good five minutes, you're following the hand. You're noticing hordes of hands that's basically covering the walls of this just start crawling towards into the heart of the cave. Well, I, I guess they called all hands on deck. Yuki, what am I saying? <laughs> Honestly, this isn't the weirdest thing I've ever stumbled across. <laughs> You've been at this longer! And then you meet 
now sat in a throne of made up of hands. A hunched over green skinned figure with a big warty nose. Oh, hello, hello. Have you come about my message for help? Uh, yes, ma'am. This is a hag, isn't it? Yep. So Magpie's a little high alert. Uh, pleasure to meet you, ma'am. Uh, this sorry, a little little high alert here instincts. Uh, technically, I'm a, a, a fay hunter more than a love guru, but we got your message. You're having a little trouble on the dating scene. Oh, piss pass. It's all good here. Except if you want to steal from me, then, uh, uh, you know, you take something of mine, I take something of theirs. She just glances towards the hands. Some just wave at you. At least it's hands instead of faces. Okay, that's actually a more horrifying image, and I don't want to think about that, Yuki. No, we got your message, ma'am. Ah... Uh... I just need help. I just can't meet anyone. Well, okay. Um. Great. Why are we asking me? I'm the most awkward when it comes to this stuff. I have no idea what I'm doing. Mm. Well. Hmm. You'll have to forgive us. Well. Let's get a little more uh, detail here. You're looking for someone, you know, to date, at least, right? Oh, yes. The nights are quite, the quiet and cold and lonely. And poor, Perfect. poor Gretel deserves to have a, have a father for you in her life. I'm guessing Gretel's the young girl we met in the market. Yes. So you need somebody who likes kids. That's That's a big... That, that's a deal breaker. They don't lock kids there out. That's perfectly understandable. Mm hmm. Oh, most certainly. So, hmm. Have you tried the tavern? Usually that's where most people go to meet other people. Either that or like parties, festivals. The market would have been a good spot. Uh, yeah. Oh, I just have to come back. Come back to pick up a few more carpets. Isn't that right, boys? And the hands just just marked out kind of a few more a few more hand weave carpets. They're quite lovely. Mm. Oh, and uh, just with the right word, they turned into rugs of smothering. So if, you, if someone tries to steal them, well, they're in for surprise. Well, they, that's a fun little trick. <laughs> that guy's got to back it away from the carpets now. <laughs> uh, sounds like probably somebody you'll need with a good sense of humor. <laughs> a very good sense of humor and a good sense of uh, self-preservation and intelligence, because they stupidly say the wrong word. They're the ones getting smothered. Probably not too handsy. Oh, I, I think she's got handsy covered. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I bought one back from me the other day. They sobered up in the morning. All right, you need someone who likes you for who you are when they're sober. That's a very good point. Let's get yeah. a better look at you, ma'am. Um, maybe, you know, we could do a makeover, give you a little more confidence, and, you know. Oh, that sounds Because I hear that works. Yeah, I think I'm on the right track. What do you think, Yuki? Makeovers are always fun. Again, you have to forgive my awkwardness. I'm a little new on the dating scene myself. Yuki, I think, is a little more experienced. I mean, slightly. Like, there was this one dragonborn that I met at a bar, and he seemed really nice. And then anyway, he took me home to meet his parents. Turns out he uh, actually just wanted to skin me alive and use my pelt as a scarf, so yeah, that didn't work out. I, w I wouldn't say I'm here! I need to stop asking questions. I ended up dating a noble, so maybe a little better. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Ben. <laughs> DM. You broke the DM. <laughs> I'm serious. How am I supposed to continue after that? I literally thought that up on the way home from work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your poor dear. That is, that is so not a thing to do. No, no, no. Oh, just tell me who he is. I'll be sure to. Teachers of manners and make sure he's a little, less, a little less handy around anymore. She does great. Be a unique addition to your, well, a unique uh, addition to your collection. He has most of Dragonborn I know wouldn't do that. Oh boy. And there was also the half orc. No, oh, no. Do I want to know? Probably not, if the first one startled you that badly. Magpie is just face palming. Let's just say he had a very big fascination with this talking dagger. Oh god, no! Ask <laughs> <laughs> later. It's at this point, some some of the hands are coming out, coming out carrying a makeup case. Well, if this is your makeup case. This should be perfect for you, which is, I think, important. Well, yes, we got to get the right color for her complexion. Yeah, don't think you want to be using a sickly yellow on a nice shade of green like that. Exactly. Oh, maybe we maybe, maybe should take this outside so we can actually see in the sun for chains. Boys! Agreed. But, and they just then the throne just, just rears up on his fingers and just starts walk, walking forward. Okay, that's impressive. You know, Mac, like, I ain't as experienced, but um, somehow I kind of ended up dating a noble. Oh, oh, that's a noble, you say? Do tell, do tell. Oh, he, his name is Ludwig Midnight. Uh, he, we're from Stanford. He's the main noble there with his grandma. Uh, we, we did a job for him, but it kind of ended a little sideways. But it was fun, and we technically did it right. Uh, but we had to do a parlay with a Fey Lord, and um, apparently he got a little thing for me. And uh, at a party we were invited to, he kind of confessed, and uh, I kind of fainted. Yuki was there for all of it. Yep. And, uh, well, yeah, we're kind of dating now. Oh, dearie, dearie, that sounds wonderful. I hope it turns out. But you just go well for you. Well, hopefully my luck can rub off on you too. Well, the good part of it, not the weird random thing happens that causes the whole mess thing. Uh, I guess they... That can be like that. They get out in the sunlight. I'm... So, what are they looking at? Yeah, fully confirmed, this is a green hag. Like, what is her hair like, for example? It looks like it has another brush run for you for a while. Oh, I already know step one of this. Uh, we're going to have to brush out that hair, because it looks like it could be real pretty once we get it brushed out. Mm -hmm. well, 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 I'll follow your advice. If it's anything like my boyfriend, really loves running hands through your hair. <laughs> Not tend to stop that quick. So, you uh, brush her hair and eventually you do get it tamed. It does look some, somewhat better. What color is it? Yes. A deep brown, not as black. Okay, so... 
dark mahogany color will go with. Mm -hmm. Dear God, this is Yuki and Magpie to a makeover. <laughs> okay, Yuki, you handle the makeup. I'll do the hair. I think I got the right style for this one. Actually, I got an idea, and she pulls out Wilson the coconut. <laughs> And she cracks him open and starts taking some of the juices and such out of it and try to use that to try and smooth out the skin. Oh, this is so nice. Meanwhile, Magpie is doing, like, a uh, maiden braid in her hair, like what she had at the party. Probably like little braid, like she's basically doing like a little braided style in the hag's hair to make it, you know, look really pretty and nice. Probably has some ribbons in her bag to, because let's be honest, in the field her braid probably comes out a lot. So she probably has like ways of tying it up. And Yuki's do doing what she can to try and blend in the the makeup along with. A little bit of coconut oil, maybe, to try and smooth things out. <laughs> well, I don't know about you, but I'm having fun with this. Bright and higher, so I'm having fun, too. I mean, I've not had oh. to do this in a long time. <laughs> I don't wear much makeup. It, it's at this point, someone someone comes along, they're dressed in a black suit, they seem to be having to wear a red Almost like a plant pot hat. You might hear some, someone might see one of those called a fez. They're wearing glasses. Says, oh, what your nag? Give me back my hands. Here's your damn watch. And a pocket watch towards the hag's feet. It ain't even God. He's turning me stumps green. You notice he doesn't have any hands. Oh, you're back. You you're back now. You know what? Huh? You know what? Give us, a, give us a kiss. Kiss and you can have your hands back. No! I've got one. Well, go be like, I've got any hands that kiss you. Well, that's just dang rude. Yes. So, uh, any particular reason you stole from a hag like a smart person? You like Magpie's voice is dripping with sarcasm with that. They just folded their arms, just took it away. They looked away. She's just looking at us like, uh, ex boyfriend? Random dumbass who came across my store. I was selling selling watches yesterday, and this twerp comes along. He helps himself. He helps us one of my watches. Well, that's just dang rude. So I kiss him. His hands are mine now until he makes up for it. Huh. Why do I get the feeling he wouldn't be able to tell which hand is his anyway? I'd assume the one that's the most greasy. I know my hands <coughs> anywhere. Oh, smashy and grabby. Okay. First of all, sir, the fact you call him smashy and grabby tells me that you're a thief and uh, you got yourself into this mess. Uh, second of all, sir, maybe you should just do what the hag asks. Because when a thief tells you you have to do a specific action to get your hands back, you do the specific action to get your hands back. I ought to know. He just grumbles on himself. Yeah, Carry I don't on. think you're going to get a hold of him. Carry on, give me a kiss so you can have your hands back. Maybe Under I normal circumstances, I'd be against this, but fie. The man in the first, but eventually, but looks like he agrees to this, he shambles over. Yuki pushes him into the hag, so the kiss goes faster. <laughs> he is going for a kiss on kiss on the cheek, but you're pushing him into, into her, but she was just a kiss on the lips. 
Uh, you can't think you make that more than a case. <laughs> Dying! You can just get him. I mean, I mean, that's one way to meet guys. I don't know. Not the best guys if they're stealing from you. Oh, at the very least, it'll teach him a lesson. <laughs> can I have my hands back now? Oh, that, that was a kiss of D's. Oh, okay, David, here's your hands back. And have the kid come scuttle up here. Fresh looking hands that just jump up and reattach themselves to him under his wrists. Smashy, grabby, I missed you. I think you ought to rename your hands and uh, rethink your life there, sir. You may want to rephrase that. You really want him renaming his hands? <laughs> bye bye, losers. You then exit. I don't well, say I think I you dodged a bullet with that one. I have to agree. You know, I know where he lives. He, he wants the paranormal shack hut thing just outside of, outside of the village. Ooh, that sounds like a fun double date. We could take Cyrano and Ludwig. He better not steal anything from Ludwig or he's going to end up a pincushion. And to be fair, I don't know what Cyrano would do to him either. But it'd be funny. That's true. And who knows what Ludwig would do? Who knows what that man can do? Anyway, well, obviously, that is not what you want to date. That is what you want to kick into a pond and say goodbye to. Ah, uh, if only. Go kiss it up. Why are the bad ones always the good kissers half the time? <laughs> eh. Yes, they gotta be good at something. It's at this point, point a... a athletic-looking young Goliath has scaled up the, the side of the... side of the mountain, doing it the hard way. He just wipes his head down, not sweating. Chaw. That was a that, that was a good workout. Let me find one of Tiny's relatives. Tiny's human, not Goliath. <laughs> that we know of, anyway. <laughs> I I know a Goliath if I saw one. Hi, why are you climbing up that lady's house? Oh, why why does anyone need to climb a mountain? Because it's there. I can't even argue with that logic. Ed, does he have his hands? He has his hands. Okay, so Granny did not deal with this one. Ed. <laughs> you take a glance. All right. You take a glance at Granny, and you can see she's looking at him with, with big puppy dog eyes, clutching the hands together. Ooh, he's a big one. An understatement? What did I say to him? What did I say to him? Huh? Hi? Well, not like me. Howdy! Yep, just introduce yourself. Yeah, just say hello and, you know, ask what he's doing, what he's into, that sort of thing. Small talk. Hello. I'm Granny, I'm the hand that looks. Hang that looks after this uh, patch of the woods. How'd That's you, a good start. How'd you do? Mm -hmm. Sean. Magpie's giving like a double thumb. <clears throat> I'm Sean. Sean, I do extreme sports for fun. Aren't you the looker? And... Insight check! <laughs> <laughs> Of course, I'm the one who goes inside check. His backpack's like, uh oh. <laughs> oh, 16 on the die alone. Um, and her her insight's insane. So, 22 total. He's honest. Oh hey, I think we did it. I think we've got a keeper. Yeah, he'll at least a dike for a little while. Better than that grease ball from earlier. Yeah. 
He kind of deserves to be in an infinite hole. <laughs> or stuck with two kids and in weird situations where some pyramid-headed creature tries to eat him. Nah, that'll never happen. <laughs> Hi, you never know. True. Also, why am I thinking of the word axolotl for some reason? Sean and Granny just stare at each other's eyes and she just clicks her fingers a few times and one of the hands comes up. Comes up carrying a big a big bag, just throws it into into Magpie's hands. Don't <coughs> that, that's five hundred gold for your services. Thank you, thank you for your time. I think I think uh I think I'm all, all right now. I say you're doing better than all right. <laughs> so mm-hmm. As this point, Sean just comes up to her, picks her up, and carries her back in the cave. Oh, yeah, we're leaving these two on. We'll <laughs> let the little granddaughter know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they go back to the market. You also notice that the hands are outside from the signs are saying, do not disturb. <laughs> That's like giving them some privacy. (laughs) Magpie, like, I guess they go back to market. Well, we got your grandma a hell of a date. Sweet. I I suggest you don't visit for a couple of hours. Or days, we're not sure which. Oh, that's fine. That's, That's fine. Hands us around here somewhere. We just go, go pay pay a visit to our to Granny's sister. Hansel. 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 Yeah, and Greta. They're Hansel. 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 Why do I feel like a gray and white bunny should be appearing roundabout now? <laughs> Your grandma don't live in a gingerbread. Your auntie don't live in a gingerbread house, do she, does she? I was, I was, she did once, but some kids came around and they sat at her as a house at home. Except for the tree stump now. Fair enough. Well, you have fun at your auntie's with your brother. Uh, we're going to head home. Thank you for everything. No problem. Happy to help. Have a fun day and... <laughs> Don't talk to strangers. If I talk to strangers, I won't be talking to you, too. She has a point. But you're already (laughs) talking to us, so we're not strangers anymore. Which was strangers in the first place. And if I can't talk to strangers, I won't talk to you in the first place. That's that's what you want to do. Press on the point of strangers. Press on the (laughs) (laughs) You can come on and break someone else. (laughs) Bye. Have fun. Magpie is going to pick Yuki up at this point at the rate this is going. <laughs> <laughs> so they head, they're heading home. Well, that worked somehow. Yeah, well, that's the thing with relationships. You never quite know where they're going to go. So you just have fun or with it. Well, where they're going to come from, again. How am I dating a noble? It's how this point does passes by you. Uh, she puts a couple of cupboards into your hands. Please have these by the end of my, by, end of my day. She takes the bag, bag of coins, counts for it. But she breaks it down into three thirds, puts one third in third to, to you, Magpie, a third to you, Yuki, and the third goes to the, goes to the guild. <laughs> Thanks. Hi, uh, Doris. Yes? Dumb question. What do you know about Dayton? I have five ex-husbands, so I don't talk to any of them. Duly noted. (sighs) 
Are we going to have to set her up with a date now, too? I don't think she wants a date. I think she's quite happy where she is. That's fair. She could always just marry Snorri's brew. Okay, I'm pretty sure she has higher standards than that. You say that, but uh, you've seen the bottle. Yeah, I've seen the bottle. I've also seen that it can clean Baba Yaga's teeth. Give us a perception more, please. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Which one of us is in trouble? Okay, 21. For some reason, you feel the urge to turn behind you. You can see you peering behind the corner. Snorri's is it the Kent Golden. You keep running. Oh, hi, Greg. <laughs> oh, great. It has a name. Bye, Greg. Run. <laughs> On this ridiculous note, do we want to bring this to an end? Oh, do you? Yeah. <laughs> do you have something, Yuki? No. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think this is a good stopping point. Just... <laughs> Just the ending card is the goal of chasing them down. Greg needs his exercise. It's a golem! And on this note, we bring this ridiculous little session to a close. <laughs> if you know where I stole the whole idea from, you have good taste. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure I called out every reference in this thing. You probably have. Probably. So it'll be maybe in your DM. This has been Lady Mage and Stop It's Just HLC. So until next Reminding time. you just be yourself when you get a date. So until next time, good night and good fights and something, something, something. Bye-bye. See you next time for, for Sarat session. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.